There are actually many companies that are watching our developments and that are looking forward to the data and who are uh, rightly sized and who need actually additional products in their bags yeah. for their sales force. Hi, I'm Lucy Ellis, Senior Editor at Scriff, and I'm here in Bio Europe in Berlin, joined by Noel Uzion, the CEO of Sensorion. So thanks for joining us today. Good morning, Lucy. Uh, so Sensorion is a clinical stage biotech developing drugs for inner ear disorders. Can you explain a bit more about the actual technology? Sure. Um, so we are specialized in the inner ear uh, therapy. So the inner ear is actually a very delicate organ, you know, and you have two parts. You have the vestibule that is responsible for our balance yeah. and you have the cochlear that is responsible for our hearing. And uh, as you can imagine, you know, when you look at the medical practice in inner ear today, it's still really well underserved. It's mainly surg uh, surgery. So we developed, you know, with our scientists and with uh, the INSERM and a lot of academia platform, technology platform to try to reproduce what's happening actually in the inner ear, so yeah. in vitro, in vivo models. So that's our unique technology platform. And we are very pleased because whatever we actually developed as data today has been highly translatable into humans. And where did the technology come from originally? Was it within the company? Yeah, no, that's a very good question. So actually the company was founded in 2009 and it was a spin-off of the INSERM, which is the equivalent of the French uh, NIH. So we built the company based on patents that uh, the INSERM scientists develop on the inner ear. And you have two products uh, in, the, in clinical trials already, so um, how are they developing and what are the next stages? Yeah, so, so far, you know, everything is going according to plan. So yes. our first product is called Sense 111, and that's actually the beginning of the story for Sensorion. This one is developed for the most severe expression of vestibular pathology. It's a very severe disease. Mm -hmm. You know, people that actually are affected by this disease end up in emergency room. When they go there, they have actually highly similar symptoms to stroke. Okay. So they are taken you know, care immediately in emergency room. They first check for stroke, they check for brain tumor, and then you know, once they remove the hypothesis, they know it's a vestibular disorder. So what happens, unfortunately, is that one of the vestibule is insulted and people are actually take, they are suffering from very, very intense vertigo. And when I say intense, it means they end up in the emergency room. It's not something you say, I'm just going to lay down, it's going to pass. It, you really suffer in terms of quality of life. So that's our first product. Yeah. It's currently in phase 2B. So the enrollment is going according to plan and we expect the data readout end of 2018. And what about the second product? So the second product, actually, we're moving from vestibular disorder to hearing disorders. Uh, the product is called Sense 401. And we are going to investigate this product in two indications. Okay. The first one is uh, called Sudden Sensory Neuro Hearing Loss. Yeah. Again, it's a, actually, it's an orphan drug. We receive the orphan drug designations from Europe for this indication. It affects around 200,000 patients in the US, in EU5 and in Japan. And it's the same here, you know, from one day to another, people actually can't hear, yeah. either uh, unilaterally or bilaterally. And, um, you know, you I end up in emergency room or you go see your doctor and you're like, I'm deaf, you know, so, and right now the medical practice yeah, is, I would say, underdeveloped. And um, so within those spaces then, what's the competition like, either what's available on the market or in development elsewhere, and how do you stand out? From that? Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, when you look actually the medical practice today, uh, when we talk to doctors, they are so looking forward to additional treatments because as I said, you know, it's mainly corticosteroids, you know, either systematically that they are given, you know, to the patients or tr tr injection, transplant panic injections. Mm -hmm. It's not very effective when you look at the meta-analysis. Um, there are segments of patients, you know, where it's becoming extremely severe, where they are implanted or you have hearing aid, but it's not actually giving back all the function of yeah. your hearing. So the pharmacology needs to be developed and there are, as you said, research and progress in that field. Mm -hmm. There are many companies that, many, when I say many, <laughs> maybe around five to ten companies globally that are trying to develop uh, drugs uh, for hearing disorders or yeah, hearing yeah. disorders. Uh, and how are you different then? How do you stand out from that? Yeah, so um, we think we are very unique because Based on our technology platform, we try to understand as much as we can what's happening 
in the mechanism of actions and yeah. the relevant targets, you know, for the inner ear disorders. Um, so that's number one. Number two also is that when you look at the way our drug works, you know, we are either modulating the activity and we are actually giving the drug uh, orally compared to the rest of you know the developments from what we are seeing it's a lot of transtampanic injection which i think is going to be actually very effective for a certain segment of patients the key question is like what happens you know after the first injection the second injection you know so so phase 2b data next year how are you thinking about late stage development and possible commercialization already yeah that's a, that's a very good question I, I, um, when you look at uh, how this drug who is going to prescribe this drug and how is, is it going to be distributed. As I said, patients end up in emergency rooms. I'm sure you know, primary care uh, practitioners actually see also a, a significant number of these patients. When you think about the sales force scale that you will need, it's, it's not with our financial muscle that we'll be able to do that. There are actually many companies that are watching our developments and that are looking forward to the data and who are uh, rightly sized and who need actually additional products in their bags yeah. for their sales force. So if everything goes well, uh, we should partner this product. Great. And um, what would be the timeline for a partner then? When do you expect somebody to possibly come in? Would it be after phase three or earlier on? Uh, so as I mentioned, we're already talking you know, to uh, d uh, different uh, uh, companies I would say they, have, they all have the appetite for the space, they're still waiting for the data because they don't necessarily have a lot of scientific background to understand the inner space, so they will be convinced by the phase 2B. Yeah. So we'll see what happens between the phase 2B and the phase 3. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you joined the CEO yeah. earlier this year, so yeah. um, what attracted you originally to the company and what's been the most interesting part of taking on that role? Yeah, I can say that it's, that has been one of the most exciting actually uh, career experience so far. Uh, my background is in mainly in Big Pharma. Uh, okay. my, my latest role was actually running the uh, global division of uh, the orphan genetic disease for Shire. Before that I was running the Haemophilia franchise for Baxter Baxalta, so like huge franchise, you know, yeah. multi-billion dollars. I was in the US, uh, so it, it, personally and professionally, I really jumped into the cold water. Yeah. And the reason I did this is I, actually I'm multiple. The first one is that I always wanted to join biotech uh, from a personal uh, career interest because when I was on the other side with Big Pharma, as I've been very impressed by how much innovation biotech was able to drive. So that was something I wanted to do. When the sensorian opportunity came up, I was very interested into the field of inner ear because I thought, you know, the medical practice was still, you know, really underserved. I think patients, you know, need uh, better options. I see actually opportunities for this market to grow. I see it like the Ofta of tomorrow. So that was number two. And number three it was when I was actually doing my due diligence on Sensorion, I was very impressed by how much the team was delivering and the, the ability to execute. So I felt yeah. pretty confident by the team. And what's been the most challenging aspect then, take, moving from Big Pharma over to Biotech and taking on this uh, chief exec role? It's very good for my humility, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would say the most challenging and, and growing experience was uh, managing the street, you know, we public actually on the French market. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a, a part of uh, that I'm actually learning and that is somewhat challenging. You know, how do you uh, speak effectively to investors? How do you attract institutional investors? Yeah. So that's. Uh, um, that has been the most challenging. How do you raise money, you know, to keep the company growing and, and developing? Uh, so what are your sort of main goals 2018? And then looking further ahead, what's your long-term vision? Yeah. So my long-term vision is really to make Sensorian you know, a global leader in inner ear therapies. And, um, you know, there are many pillars that we can really dev develop to get there. Yeah. For 2018, I'm very excited because if everything goes according to plan and we continue to execute, we will be, we will move, be moving from a monoproduct a clinical stage company to a multi-product clinical stage company. So we may have one, two, three products in phase two next year if everything goes well. So that excites me. I'm also really excited, you know, by uh, uh, working with the teams, learning, you know, with uh, the KOLs. I love uh, the science. I love talking to doctors, shadowing them to understand. So. Uh, so we'll wait and see and uh, yeah. look out for that data next yeah, year. Yeah, watch us. <laughs> uh, it's great to speak to you. Thank I hope you, you, enjoy Lucy. the conference. Thank you.